This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. kids doing up here in the attic? Comet, it went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nick. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was your age, we used to use the old TV set. No satellite hookups or anything. Just two of signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Some are even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, look at this. Mm. Ooh, what's, what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Smibar, along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And before we get into tonight's uh, exciting extravaganza fun, I just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, I want to tell you our box number, and for those of you who, are, who may not be uh, regular viewers, I just want to tell you our, we have a new box number. It's box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. There it is. Wow. The magic of television. Amazing. <laughs> it's like magic. Amazing. <laughs> so let's go on to tonight's uh, big topic. Uh, certainly one it's of the. It's a contest. you got to guess what it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll let, we'll let you in on the big secret. Tonight's topic is Jim Henson. Yes, of course, he's uh, no longer with us, but we're not going to, uh, I don't think we're going uh, to dwell on that. that. We're going to, uh, since, uh, the you know, our our uh, reason d'art or whatever, <laughs> raison d'art. Raison d'etre. D'etre, whatever, <laughs> is uh, basically ends at uh, January 1st, 1980. We're basically just going to talk about... Uh, Jim Henson as he was. Well, it's like a major part of our growing up. Oh, actually. sure. Well, I know for me and Wilbert, uh, Ed Sullivan was special because the Muppets were on it. Right. And because we're kind of the pre-Sesame Street 
Well, see, that's era, but that's me. You see, fall right into the see, Sesame I Street. See, I was, I was, I was like hitting kindergarten the first year of Sesame, Sesame Street. Hey. So I was like in the the first generation of Sesame Street kids. Put it and in that your was shoe, much, it'll break. Huh? <laughs> Put it in your shoe, it'll break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, certainly, a, certainly an important part of my life because it. Uh, Probably. But you couldn't count to ten without them. That's right. You couldn't. You couldn't do the alphabet. It's like forget it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine ten. ten. <laughs> See, before, but like before Sesame Street, it was Ed Sullivan right. and Jimmy Bill Dean. Rolf was on the Jimmy, Jimmy Dean, Dean show. Jimmy Dean show. In fact, in fact, yep. It says here. Well, Henson, like, right. did local, did like a local show before all that. Yeah, he did. He did a show called Sam and Friends. Yeah. Philadelphia, um, Washington, Boston, Washington, uh, Maryland, East Maryland, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Maryland in 1955, it, Baltimore, something. Let's see here, Jimmy Dean here. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Dean, I got it right here. Okay. Well, Please. it was uh, just one of your generic uh, kind of variety shows, really, and except it was more countrified. You know, the Texas Wildcats, the Country Lads. Intro to Hee Haw. Mary Click, <laughs> yeah, the Chuck Cassie Singers. And uh, blah blah blah. But the important thing was that okay. this was the first time we saw the first. Well, nationally, yes. we saw the first uh, the first uh, Muppet, which was right. Rolf. A continuing character on the ABC well. series was Jim Henson's Muppet Hound Rolf, whom Dean joked and battered. Who, with whom Gene joked and battered. Hmm. My old buddy, Gene. Yes. Dean. <laughs> Jimmy Jean. Jimmy Jean. Yes. Jimmy Jean. Jimmy Jean. Jimmy Jean. Jimmy Jean. Now, actually, Kermit is the oldest. True. Right. Oh, Kermit is the oldest, but I think Rolf was the first one. Was the first national, national exposed. The first national exposed. Yeah. Thing. Nationally exposed. Nationally exposed. <laughs> As it were. <gasps> oh, Christ. They never wore anything, so. Uh, <laughs> except the Muppet babies do, so that's the amazing thing. But when they come in adults, they don't have to wear clothes anymore. <laughs> that's. Well, I mean, when, they, when, the Muppet, well, when the Muppet shit. Show came on, you know, they right. started wearing the clothes. Right. So, I mean, during Sesame Street, they're, they're just Muppets. That's they didn't right. Wear clothes. That's they just right. changed their heads to change yeah. the character. <laughs> yeah. Give them new eyes and then. Well, Piggy was always dressed. Right. The latest yeah, well, Immaculately. Piggy came out in the Muppet Show, though. Right. Yeah, well, you know, the Muppet Show, like, he wanted to do it here. Mm -hmm. But everybody turned him down. No, right. a show of puppets ain't gonna work. work. Went to London. Yes. And did it. For lots of years, lots and, of years. and dun, dun, became dun, one of the most, dun, 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 suppose like the dun, 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 most widely seen dun, 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 syndicated dun, dun, show dun, ever. Dun, 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 I mean, worldwide. Dun, dun, dun. Probably. That's that's what I've read. It's uh, it's it was just incredible. But Piggy, if you ever saw it, like the first one, right? Piggy wasn't Piggy. No, she that's was right. Piggy Lee. Yes. And this singer lady who was before my time, Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee. Yes. Got like. Mucho upsetto. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And like, did she threaten to sue? Uh, probably did. Well, well, she sued Disney later because of that. Uh, the tramp. Yeah, pay, lady, lady the, the tramp, tramp deal. So Peggy. she sues a lot of people. Uh -huh. So <laughs> that's, that's like no how she made her yeah. living. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. It's like when, once the once the career dies, you yeah. can have a new career being <laughs> well, suing doing people. Lawsuits. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exciting career in lawsuits. Yeah, you can have an exciting career in law. <laughs> That's right. Singing career finished. <laughs> well, before they went on, uh, there was a uh, to Muppet show or to Sesame Street even. There was an obscure show on CBS, a summer replacement show called Our Place, mm. which was hosted by this guy right here. Ralph, okay. He was the host. <laughs> And featuring everyone's favorite, the Doodle Town Pipers. Ah, yes, <laughs> Doodle Town. Where are they now? <laughs> and as 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 was asked by David Letterman, I believe, where the heck is Doodle Town anyway? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That was uh, Jack Burns, Avery Schreiber. You know the Burns and Schreiber team. You know what I mean? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You know, I think yeah. I watched huh? that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Was that yeah. on? <laughs> there was a Burns. Well, well uh, we sixty-seven. Uh, summer oh, 67. Well, sure it was that. the 67 summer replacements for Smothers Brothers. Because I just Probably. loved watching Muppets blow up. Yeah. Muppets blew up. They blowed up real good. Blowed up really <laughs> eight eight things, you know, like well, there was each a, other. <laughs> they really, yeah, because they brought the, they started that with really with Sam and Friends was pretty violent, but and and you see it, you saw it all the way into the Muppet Show where there was that guy I can't remember his name, crazy. 
He would have one who would blow things up. <laughs> was that his name? No, quite possibly. Wasn't it Harry? Yeah, always Crazy, had the plunger, dynamite plunger. Yeah. And blew everything up. Yeah. I I can never understand why he thought the show was so. <laughs> well, that was balance. Yeah. It was just funny. It was funny. <laughs> the first time, you know, kids were just like, hey. <laughs> It's like they, everything you want to do in your little kids' They did it on cartoons. It was like the, the anti-duty or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Howdy was just like... Anti-duty. <laughs> everything was nice and lovely, and Henson was like, no, 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 kids love violence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't any worse than the cartoons. So right, <laughs> right, exactly. These are just like cartoons a step away from cartoons. I mean, they were like live right, cartoons. Right, right, that's yeah. true. Which was great. So let's see, um, right before um, uh, before Muppet Show, we had their very short appearance on Saturday Night Live that one season. Oh, yeah. Oh, those were the, great. Yeah. Those, were, those were like the mature Muppets. Yes, first, yes, the yes they were. The first mature Muppets before they jumped into the incredible films he made that nobody ever liked but me. So. I don't know. The films were fun. <laughs> I mean, I thought Dark Crystal was just wonderful. I thought Labyrinth is like one of the best movies ever, ever made. I didn't, but Nobody I don't Nobody else even saw them. <laughs> like a really long but David no, Bowie video. Those were really... <laughs> That's okay. He had cool hair. Well, well, yeah, so... But those were... What were their names? And the oh. big idol thing that sounded like the... The top. Mighty Pavat. <laughs> yeah. What? what? <laughs> that was the, the land of Scorch? What is it? Was that no, one? his name was... Um, I mean, the, the, it was in the land of Scorch, though. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, his name was, I, for, I forget. Well, any, anytime I, like the first anytime I try to think of their name, I, I end up thinking of um, Beldar. And <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the Conehead. I know. Well, it's like they, they had some strange names like that, though. I don't think they even mention them here. Well, I'm looking through here, and I don't see, uh, I don't see any even references to those. Yeah, they weren't on for very long because they really didn't, I mean, although it was a lot more adult than anything Henson had done before, they still felt, well, this is just something, this was some sort of compromise that they did for NBC to allow this thing on, and it really didn't work. Uh, to, to, to the point at the end, like, the, the cast was you know, openly making fun of it during the show. Like, there was one where, um, I remember, uh, Chevy Chase, like, stood in for the Muppets and did this thing. It was the same set, but it was just, like, mm -hmm. like his hands going like this, and like, what was, what was it called? Paying the Milkman. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Didn't Chevy show up in their movies later? Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Jim said, hey, hey, now I have the money. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like a has-been, bud. <laughs> Don't you know, the, um, I just really realized those, those, we can't think of what their names are, but by golly, they've made a resurgence because it's almost, it's like the big guy. And his, and, his, and his rather thin wife, you know, right. and the, the funny, thin friend. They've, they've made a resurgence on the dinosaur show. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you look at those, and it's a, lot like, it's a lot like Dark Crystal. I mean, those characters were a lot, very reminiscent. I mean, obviously, it was the prototype for Dark Crystal. Yeah, they were the first ones with scales. Right. And, mm -hmm. and not all... Yeah, fuzzy not all fuzzy and cute. they weren't all fuzzy and happy. They were like gnarly, nasty. I always thought that, I always thought they were great. I always thought the, especially the big idol there with the Edward G. Robinson yeah. face and everything. It was a big because stone I, idol. you know, it just the first yeah. time I saw it, it looked like a stone. Right. Didn't expect it to right. speak. Yeah. I thought I don't know. I thought they were really cool. That's, it reminds me of the uh, what was it? The trash heap that was on. Um, Fraggle. The Fraggles. Fraggle Rock. Yeah. yeah. Which which kind of jumps ahead there, but it's still the same idea. The fact that um, Jimmy he, he learned from what he did and right. he improved on oh, it. Oh yeah, definitely definitely improved on it. Which was the neat thing about the um, what were they called the any time the anything people that he had on Sesame Street. Is that the ones that they? People in the neighborhood. Yeah, the people in there. There was something the like, called like the anything people or something because they changed their eyes. Right. They changed their <laughs> heads. They. Change just they were interchangeable basically, which was a neat thing that he he learned that he could do, and um he did it, and he well, ended that, up with the these Muppets characters. Was like a group effort because it's like you can identify some of the puppeteers with the characters, oh, yeah. like the guy that does Gonzo, Golas is that his name? Dave Golas, 
I see it when it's spelled, Dave but Goltz. I don't. Goltz. Goltz. Goals or something. I, it's an G-O- odd spelled G-O-E-L-S. name. G-O-E-L-S. Pronounce it L-Z. I mean, Pronounce you it know, however you want. He, he, he created Gonzo. Jim oh, Henson yeah. was definitely Kermit. Yes, right? he was Kermit. That's... And I wonder why Frank Oz was Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> they always even team up, you know. <laughs> Henson was Ernie and uh, Frank Oz was Bert. Bert. <laughs> and yeah. who else was Frank Oz? Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the Muppets was just like a whole team effort, you know? It was just like a whole team right. effort. You, you got real individual feel as as characters develop because when they were first on the Sullivan show they weren't really any well, you don't you didn't have a definite character right. it was more like a up. set <laughs> yeah a scene right. a set something happened things blew up things shrank things to grew music. but you did it to music <laughs> yes. it was art <laughs> so they were like um little cartoons yeah <laughs> Little live action cartoons. Uh, uh, right. You know, Rolf was probably the first one we knew his name, and I guess when Sesame Street came along. That's when you got really got know, characters. We got to know Kermit. We got to know Big Bird, Bert and Ernie, Ernie Oscar the Grouch. Oscar. Well, the Cookie, guy that Monster. Does, Cookie Monster. The guy that does, well, Frank Oz is Cookie Monster. The guy that does. Cookie! The guy that does um, <laughs> Big Bird is also Oscar, Carol Spinney. Right. And it was really interesting in long. Later on in um, Sesame Street, a fella came on Mr. McIntosh, the fruit seller guy. That was Kermit Love, who this guy was named for. He was like Jim Henson's mentor. Wow. And he might still be on the show. He created Snuggle. Mm. The Snuggle Bear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Snuggle the Bear, bear Show. Of, <laughs> Snuggle Bear. I kind love of this guy. <laughs> so he's kind of a cousin to the Muppets. Mr. McIntosh was, and I was surprised reading the credit. But love, where do I know that name? <laughs> Read some of this stuff. So, so I don't know, it's kind of a, it's neat, it's neat. <laughs> and then there were the uh, the great Muppet movies that were done, the, or the Muppet movie, the, um, the Great Muppet Caper, the, great Muppet Caper, the Muppets Take, Take Manhattan, Manhattan. <laughs> which, which um, in which they, they incorporated all these different stars into the right. into the plot. Lots of cameos. And but they had just about every Muppet you ever saw. And, and for the first time, you got to see things like like uh, Kermit's legs. Yes. <laughs> you really got, you got to see riding the Kermit bike. riding a bicycle yeah. in in the Muppet in the Muppet movie. Right. And so then by what was it the great what was in the Muppets Take Manhattan one yeah. that they were all riding bicycles. Right. Every yeah. Muppet. But before it was always like. Dun, 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 you know, you always just saw it all about here. <laughs> and so it's easy to figure out. Oh, there's somebody under there. But then you saw Kermit riding about. Right. It's like, wow. How did they do that? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Reality. <laughs> Reality. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are alive. They are real. <laughs> Maybe they are. Oh, and then there were the specials. There were, oh, let me see. The Christmas. Muppet Musicians of Bremen. Yeah. Um, the, um. You never hardly see anything. The Frog Prince. Which was just one of my favorites because the princess talked backwards. It was great, <laughs> and they had lots of nifty little songs in there. And there was a little frog, and, and Kermit like was what? the narrator. The little frog wasn't that Robin? Yeah, probably yeah. Robin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They realized they needed a second generation frog. <laughs> it was just it was just some great stuff there. Because they couldn't use Kermit in every scene. <laughs> exactly. Robin did a real cute thing on the Muppet Show one time where he was sitting on the steps doing the uh, the Milne poem. The half, am I halfway up? What is it? Halfway up the stairs, is that what it's called? It was very cute. It was one of the okay. cutest things I remember mm-hmm. Robin doing. So I thought Robin was a cute character. Yeah. Well, back when they got cute again. Right. <laughs> well, the well, Muppet Show was cute, but it was pretty outrageous. Well, then, then you got to stuff Everything like, was on that. Uh, just to go to one of the last big projects was the, the Jim Henson Hour, where they brought in the characters like oh. that. Uh, like that, that lion. No, uh, what I loved was that was that what was the the, the bunny's name? And he was like intentionally beans? Yeah, beans, beans bunny. It was like I'm really cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just making fun of these cute puppets, you know. <laughs> that one, and then they went on and did the storyteller, storyteller, which was incredible. Right. Oh yeah. Um, and then the one where he would introduce with that huge lion. Oh yeah, and that and that was like he was just doing all this computer graphics, and I love the bit where like the stairs appeared, and he was like walk down these stairs that were like floating on nothing. And I don't think puppetry would have gotten as far. Oh no. Because I mean all this stuff. I mean when I saw how 
okay, I like watched Fraggle Rock, even though that's an 80s show, an right, early 80s right. show. It's like when I saw how they did that stuff, right. they take you behind the scenes, how those little, there was actually doozers. nobody working the doozers. Right. They yeah. were like a remote control, uh -huh. intricate toy. Right. And the guy that creates that stuff, I can't even pronounce his name. It's a very long name. <laughs> I don't have it on here. But I mean, it's all radio remote control. Oh, um. Who would have thought to do that, you know? I would have thought to do that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, when you really think about it, if, the, uh, if Henson hadn't been around, Basically, puppetry would still be pretty much at the. Kukla for Anna Dolly! Bunny rabbit smacking his head yeah, on the yeah. table! Yeah. <laughs> Here come the ping pong balls. You know, that, that kind of bit. Bunny rabbit, a yeah. character with so much emotion. Oh, bam! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no carrot, bam, bam! Then, like King Friday the 13th. That would be about <laughs> it. <Yeah>. Oh, well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Meow, meow, scare meow, meow. Meow, meow. <laughs> yeah, but I always, always oh, looked at the, the, the Muppet forward. idea. It's like you got Muppet. It's it's like puppet and marionette together. Right. Because that's that's kind of what they were. They they some of them had hand things, some of them had string things. But then you get to the great big ones that actually had people in them. Right. And then they the big ones they had people in them and they had TVs in there yeah. so they could see what was going right. on, what the they thing was doing. TV inside. Uh -huh. It was Whoa. just wild. <laughs> Because um well well um what's what's um Jabba the Hutt was a yeah. Muppet right yes <laughs> yeah and well, he like, had two well, people like inside I think it was three people no it was like two, two people and like a guy remote controlling his tail or something no no the person in the tail was actually a little person uh, oh that's well, right I thought there was like two or three no. little people in yeah, there yeah a little person doing the tail specifically because you had to be tall mm. to be a Muppeteer. Henson was like over, he was like six foot tall, right. so he scaled things right, to, him. to his comfort. So, so, so if you, <laughs> you better be a my height or you're going to be like a lot. <laughs> you better be tall or yeah. you better be able to wear heels right. forever. <laughs> so, yeah, you had to be tall to be a Muppeteer. This was something I read and I was like really upset because I was like, well, there goes that career goal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know. I think of Jabba and Yoda as like cousins. Of the Muppets, because weren't those pretty much Frank Oz's own uh, creations? Well, kinda, but I think. But well, they, yeah, they had definitely. a lot. They had a lot of other influences. I mean, you got the old, the whole um, George Lucas uh, Industrial Light and Magic thing right. going there. Mm -hmm. So, um, but but they they're just they're Muppets. <laughs> they, and the the, 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 the what the the Sarlacc. That lived yeah. in the pit. Yeah, I just look at that as a great big Muppet too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's like it like goes back to the old Muppets where they're always eating things. They're, right. just, they're, they're, they're just throwing stuff in there. People are just falling <laughs> in there. <laughs> 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 And the thing belches too. This is great. Well, you never get away from it. I mean, Cookie Monster ate boxes of cookies, cookies. whole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone be falling out. <laughs> He would eat. To, he yeah. would eat letters. On yeah. This was just great. That's anything that was around. They try to eat buildings too. <laughs> you know, kids were never afraid of the monsters on Sesame Street. Well, because they weren't. They were monsters, but they weren't monsters. I mean, yeah. there there were monsters because there's like uh, Sweetums. Yeah. Now, Sweetums was a great Sweetums big thing. Sweetums not scary. <laughs> but he was a great big trolley dude with Sweetums big teeth. Did, wasn't he first in? Um, he was in the um, the Frog Prince. The Frog Prince, yeah, that's where Sweetums first popped up to my notice. Yeah. But then he was like a regular Muppet Show guy. Yeah, he's on the Muppet Show, and then there were the other monsters too. Oh, remember the Great Muppet Show where Alice Cooper was on and danced with all the monsters? <laughs> Yeah, some of the guests they had on there. Elton John. Oh, yeah. For the end of the show, all the Muppets have the feathers and the yeah. big glasses, yeah. and Elton comes out yeah. all conservative. Yeah. <laughs> they did Crocodile Rock with crocodiles. Yeah. They do. And Alice Cooper was on there. The, the, the school's, school's out. out. Yeah, with all the monsters leaving school. Vincent Price did the show. Oh, and whenever, whenever they have some sort of heartthrob, you'd have a underlying subplot of uh, of Piggy running around after him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Christopher Reeve is on and they did something from Superman, I think, you know. <laughs> She's dressed up like Lois Lane and it's like 
<laughs> and the poor hey. great Gonzo. He knows he's great. Gee, we got people around here like that. But anyway, <laughs> I always love Gonzo wrestling the brick. You know, that's just yeah. that's entertainment. <laughs> I, was, I was like Sam the Eagle. Come on, you know, just out. Uh, uh, the spoof on censorship there. Yeah, yeah it's like, this is, this is uh, completely a good song. Yeah. <laughs> this should be a dignified show. It's like something George Bush watches. Right. Goes, yeah, right. Yeah, Sam the Eagle. Eagle's right, yeah. man. Eagle's yeah. right. Yeah, I didn't just remind you of, um, what's his name on, on Monty Python? It was, Stop it, this is silly. <laughs> yeah, 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 Champ, Monty Python. <laughs> no, that was... Was that Graham Chapman? Yeah, it was Graham Chapman. It was Graham Chapman. Yeah, the, the, the Colonel. The, the Colonel. Colonel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just a moment. All right, that's, that's enough. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> so you had, uh, let's see, uh, one of my, oh yeah, you had Captain Link Heartthrob of Pigs, Pigs in Space! <laughs> Well, that, Strange concept. What a, <laughs> oh, you got a picture? Oh, wow, a pigs in space picture. Pigs in well, space ship shaped like a ham. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't actually have a picture of the spaceship. But tune I, in next got a time. Of Link when, oh, oh, and the Swedish chef. Yeah. Anything. Anything. Oh, get this. I don't think there's any chance. No, here, right, here. Right, here. Right, here. Right, here. Let's hold it over this. Yeah, way. there we go. There, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Follow the picture. Dang, dang, dang. <laughs> Let's like, see, there's ah! Link, and there's Swedish Chef. Swedish Chef started out with real hands. Yeah, I remember that, yeah, yeah at the beginning. Yeah, they were Henson's hands, right. I believe. Yeah, yeah like real hands. Oh, like throw yeah. chickens around. Dr. Teeth. Bork, bork, bork. The hand of him. The hand of him. What was his band? Dr. Teeth and the Electric And the Electric Mayhem, mayhem. yeah. Electric Mayhem. And these old guys, where's the other old Stanley guy? Stanley Ward, uh, Waldorf. Well, He's the not other guy's in, not in there. Is that Guy Smiley there? Yeah, that's Guy Smiley. Yeah. <laughs> guy Smiley. Oh, yeah, my Guy nerves. Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the first Kermit who was like made out yeah. of his mom's coat. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> You think that your mom would have a coat that green and you'd let her <laughs> <Yeah>. wear it? <laughs> that's not even green. It's like a putrid, well, nasty it's quite color. Well, old, you know. Well, that's true. The color fades. Of course, this was before color. <laughs> well, I do like yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, too, way too much uh, gloss on that. <laughs> that gives you an got an idea. Slow pan here. Uh, gee whiz, Bert. <laughs> well, that's Ernie, Ernie down there. Ernie. Mm -hmm. Oh, my old buddy Bert. the Henson characters. Yeah. <laughs> I believe this is Candace up here from Fraggles. Okay. Yeah. I was like, that's right. The Swedish chef and Ernie. Yeah. And, and the, and the, oh, that. What was that called? The dog, when they did the dog game. Oh, that for great Epic. dog show. Oh, shoot, what was that called? Remember that? I, I, dog, I, I, dog I, town. Dog town, okay. Yeah, Bugsy. <laughs> Three times around, around or wind up in the, the pound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dog <Poor> town. For <laughs> true. So, uh, so certainly, like we said, with, without him, it pretty much would have been Google with Fran and Ollie and <laughs> King Friday the 13th. That would have been about, that would have been the state yeah. of puppetry in 1990. <laughs> would have been stuck with uh, poor little Gary Anderson puppets. Yeah. <laughs> Super <-car. laughs> Well, anyways, we're getting the signal to get out of here. So uh, next time on Vast Wasteland, we're going to be doing cult shows. The kind of shows that you know, we're only a few episodes of, but... Uh, we're, Boy, did they catch on. That's right. Well, <laughs> they caught on with this very small but ultra-dedicated audience. And so we'll be uh, taking a look at that next time. Mostly uh, you, me, and Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> we're the cult. That's it. <laughs> so, anyways, for uh, all of us here at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time. Good night. Yay! <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.